Afrobeat is a music genre that involves the combination of elements of West African musical styles such as Fuji music and highlife with American jazz and later soul and funk influences. With a focus on chanted vocals, complex intersecting rhythms, and percussion. The term was coined in the 1960s by Nigerian multi-instrumentalist and bandleader Fela Kuti, who is responsible for pioneering and popularizing the style both within and outside Nigeria. Distinct from Afrobeat is Afrobeats, a sound originating in West Africa in the 21st century, one that takes in diverse influences and is an eclectic combination of genres such as highlife, hip-hop, house, juju, and dombolo, R&B and soca. The two genres, though often conflated, are not the same. Shewan Kuti during an Afrobeat performance Afrobeat was developed in the late 1960s led by Fela Kuti who, with drummer Tony Allen, experimented with different contemporary music of the time. Afrobeat stemmed from high life, which began in Ghana in the early 1920s. During that time, Ghanaian musicians incorporated foreign influences like the foxtrot and calypso with Ghanaian rhythms such as Osubisaba. Yoruba percussion and vocal traditions were incorporated as well. High life was associated with the local African aristocracy during the colonial period and was played by numerous bands including the Jazz Kings, Cape Coast Sugar Babies, and Accra Orchestra along the country's coast. This was the music Fela Kuti and Tony Allen played and listened to when they were young. In the late 1950s, Kuti left Lagos to study abroad at the London School of Music where he was exposed to jazz. He returned to Lagos and played a high-life jazz hybrid, albeit, without commercial success. In 1969, Kuti and his band went on a trip to the US and met Sandra Smith, a singer and former Black Panther. Sandra Smith introduced Kuti to many writings of activists, such as Martin Luther King Jr., Angela Davis, Jesse Jackson, and his biggest influence of all, Malcolm X. As Kuti was interested in African-American politics, Smith would inform him of current events. In return, Kuti would fill her in on African culture. Since Kuti stayed at Smith's house and was spending so much time with her, he started to re-evaluate his music. That was when Kuti noticed that he was not playing African music. From that day forward, Kuti changed his sound and the message behind his music. Upon arriving in Nigeria, Kuti also changed the name of his group to Africa 70. The new sound hailed from a club that he established called the Africa Shrine. The band maintained a five-year residency at the Africa Shrine from 1970 to 1975 while Afrobeat thrived among Nigerian youth. Also influential was Ray Stephen Achi, a Nigerian musician touring from Paris, France, with his Maidenbo Orchestra in the 1970s. The name was partially born out of an attempt to distinguish Fela Kuti's music from the soul music of American artists such as James Brown. Prevalent in his and Lagbaja's music are native Nigerian harmonies and rhythms, taking different elements and combining, modernizing, and improvising upon them. Politics is essential to Afrobeat, since founder Kuti used social criticism to pave the way for social change. His message can be described as confrontational and controversial, which can be related to the political climate of most of the African countries in the 1970s, many of which were dealing with political injustice and military corruption while recovering from the transition from colonial governments to self-determination. As the genre spread throughout the African continent many bands took up the style. The recordings of these bands and their songs were rarely heard or exported outside the originating countries but many can now be found on compilation albums and CDs from specialist record shops. Many jazz musicians have been attracted to Afrobeat. From Roy Ayers in the 1970s to Randy Weston in the 1990s, there have been collaborations that have resulted in albums such as Africa, Center of the World by Roy Ayers, released on the Polydor label in 1981. In 1994, Branford Marsalis, the American jazz saxophonist, included samples of Fela's Beasts of No Nation on his Buckshot Le Funk album. Afrobeat has also profoundly influenced important contemporary producers and musicians, such as Brian Eno and David Byrne, who credit Fela Kuti as an essential influence. Both worked on Talking Heads' highly acclaimed 1980 album Remain in Light, which brought polyrhythmic Afrobeat influences to Western music. The new generation of DJs and musicians of the 2000s who have fallen in love with both Kuti's material and other rare releases have made compilations and remixes of these recordings. Thus reintroducing the genre to new generations of listeners and fans of Afropop and Groove. In the late 1990s and early 2000s, a small Afrobeat scene began in Brooklyn, New York, with projects including Antibalas, the Doctaris and the Kokolo Afrobeat Orchestra. 
Since that time, other artists like Zongo Junction have come onto the scene. Many others have cited Afrobeat as an influence like Daptone Records adjacent groups The Budos Band and El Michel's Affair. The horn section of Antibalas have been guest musicians on TV on the radio's highly acclaimed 2008 album Dear Science, as well as on British band Foles' 2008 album, Anecdotes. Some Afrobeat influence can also be found in the music of Vampire Weekend and Paul Simon. In 2020, Antibalas was nominated for the Grammy Award for Best Global Music Album. Afrobeat artists of the 2000s and present, following in the footsteps of Fela Kuti, are for example his sons Femi Kuti and Shewan Kuti, Frank Bayong and Masak, Sagun Damiza and the Afrobeat. Crusaders, Nguyen Afrobeat, Eddie Taylor and the Heartphones, Ben Tukru, the Albinoid Afrobeat Orchestra, Albinoid Sound System. Abayami Afrobeat Orchestra, Carl Hector and the Malkoons, Afrodis and Dele Sosimi and the ex-Africa 70 members Ogane Kolobo. With Afrobeat Academy, Nicholas Ottonetti, who is also known as Pax Nicholas, with Redimtoxi. The Namibian artist Ease associates Afrobeat with reggae and Quito. In 2009 the music label Knitting Factory Records produced the Broadway musical Fella. As said on the musical's website, the story showcased Cootie's courage and incredible musical mastery along with the story of his life. The show had 11 Tony nominations, receiving three for Best Costumes, Best Sound, and Best Choreography. Fella was on Broadway for 15 months and was produced by notables such as Sean J. Z. Carter and Will and Jada Pinkett Smith. Many celebrities were noted as attending the shows, including Denzel Washington, Madonna, Sting, Spike Lee, Kofi Annan, and even Michelle Obama. Michelle Williams, former singer of girl group Destiny's Child, was cast as the role of Sandra Isidore. Thanks for watching.